Hello, and welcome to the first session of a series on configuring PowerScale with 1FS version 9.3. If you find this useful, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. In this session, we'll create a new cluster and apply a trial license. It is a good idea to prepare yourself with the answers to the questions that are going to be asked when you run the wizard to do the initial setup. And I have a list I'm showing that tells what the questions are gonna be and what the answers should be. So first you're going to need a password for root and a password for admin. You need a name for this cluster and it's recommended to keep that name to be 11 characters or less. The default coding is always option eight, which is the default. So you can just hit enter at that question. Now the interfaces are A and B that are for the internal networking. This is where they go through external switches so the nodes can talk to each other to be able to pass data from node to node and commands from node to node. Now on these, we don't set IP addresses on anything in the PowerScale environment. We always set a range of addresses, which is like a block of addresses. Um, and then the system itself will assign the addresses to the various interfaces. So if you look at the list here, you'll see an interface A, you have a net mask, you have an MTU, and you have an IP range. Now in the real world, you always want to use that uh, range of the last octet to be from one to 254. So it gets the whole octet. In the, in the lab version, I use a smaller range. So uh, internal A goes to the switch A, internal B goes to switch B on each of the nodes. Now we have to have a minimum of three nodes to work the 1FS software. And if it's a, if the hardware is version six, then it needs to be four nodes minimum because the nodes work as pairs. Anything above or below version six can work with three. And for, for this demonstration, I'm going to create a three node cluster. Um, there is a section called Smart Connect. And the Smart Connect is a, it's like a small internal name server that allows the connections to be load balanced between the nodes. And then we have the DNS settings, which is points to your actual DNS. And then we have date and time, and then we have a manual join mode. Now that we have the plan in place, we can go ahead and start configuring a cluster. So the first thing you need to do is to connect a serial port connection to the DB9 connector on node one. And the speed is 115200 baud. Once you do that, and assuming that the node is powered up, you'll get this um, screen with this menu. So we're gonna choose to create a new cluster. That's option one. And you can go through this whole long EULA if you like, but if you want to, you can hit the letter Q and skip right through it. Now we need to put in a root password and twice admin password twice. Now we need a name for the cluster. I'm gonna use PS demo SRC and I'm calling it SRC because later on I'm gonna create a second cluster and, and do some uh, replication configuration. So the coding is uh, version is eight, option eight, which is always. And the next thing is to start configuring the interfaces for the back end or internal network, the networks that the nodes use to talk to each other. 
And first we'll have to configure uh, interface A for network A. And we do first set a net mask. And normally this would be zero, but I'm gonna use 248 to use a smaller subnet. And then we have to give it an IP range and going to use, I'm going to hit choose option one to add the IP range. And then I'm going to put in 128.221. This is always that, those numbers. Two dot, and normally, well, whatever. I'm going to use 217, my choice, and up to 219, which gives me three addresses. Okay, we have an IP range set and a net mask for network A. So looking at that, that looks good. So I'm going to hit enter to keep these settings. And now I'm going to do the interface B and fail over. So that's option two here. And first we have to set a net mask. And the net mask will be 255. Dot two five five dot two five five dot two forty eight. Normally this would be zero, but for for my virtual lab, I'm using this tighter, smaller um, subnet. And then we need to uh, configure IP. We're going to add an IP address. And the IP address low in for B was going to be 128.221.253. And I'm going to use the same range just so I don't forget. 217 to 219 gives me three addresses. And that looks good. So now we're going to configure the failover network and add a IP address of 128.221.254.217.219. And that looks good. I'm going to hit enter one more time to back up a level. Now, if you look at this, we have the net mask set and we have both ranges for the B and the failover set. So we're good there. And we're good with the uh, internal interfaces A and B are done. So now we're going to do external interface. Now the external interface on here is called EXT1 on this simulator. On the real hardware now, the latest versions of the hardware, the uh, external interface is going to be different. So this is matching my real um, network. So I'm going to have to set up the I mask to be 255.255.255.0. And I'm going to give it an IP range of, add the IP, that's option one. And then we're going to say 192.168.1. That's my real network. And I'll use the same three addresses, 217 to 219. That looks okay. And so we have external setup. And now we go to gateway, and this is real. Now with the Smart Connect zone name, I'm going to make, create a name for this Smart Connect server. And I'm going to call it SC dot and then P S D E M O dash S R C dot and my domain here, I call it Chuck dot lab. I'm going to give it an IP address for this uh, name server. And that's going to be 
192.168.1.216. Now these are these two items are going to go into the DNS later, so we can use the host name to um, connect to it instead of IP addresses. Now the DNS settings, we have to add a DNS one two one eight. Dot 1.242 is the DNS in my lab. And search domain, I'll make that. Okay, DNS server's done. And EXT1 interface network is all complete. So now we're going to do time zone. Well, I happen to be in the central time zone, so I'll choose option three. And then the date and time. Let's see how close we come here to reality. And it is 1330 here, so that's way wrong. So using the same syntax that you see on the screen, I'm going to go 2023 slash 04 slash 25. Space and it's 1330 here, so 13 colon 30. And I always go to the middle, so I'm never more than half a minute off. Okay, time is configured, manual join mode, which is normal. And there's my whole configuration that I've put in. So I'll say enter, yes. Now, this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to um, skip ahead by pausing the recording. So node one is completed, and so now it's time to add the other nodes. That, and I'm going to do it two different ways so that you can see two different ways. The current screen is the second node after having been powered up and logged into at the serial port with the DB9 connector. And this time, instead of choosing create a new cluster, we will we'll choose number two, and that is to join an existing cluster. So we don't have to enter all that information again. It's all there in node one. It knows the whole cluster config. So when I choose it to go to number one, it will download all of the information from that cluster. So I skipped recording that last part just to shorten this video some. You don't need to see all that stuff go up the screen. And node two has been successfully added. So we're going to log in and I'm going to show you another way to add nodes so that you don't have to go plug into the serial port of each node. I have logged in to node one using Putty because I'm going to show you how to add from the command line, logged into any active node. You can add additional nodes by using two commands. The first one is busy, busy devices node list. This will show you any nodes that are currently connected through the backend network but are not joined to, the, to any cluster. So if we want to join that one, we just have to type Izzy device node add. And then we want to add the serial number. We can just copy it from there. If you have to know what serial number you're adding next, you can see on the back of them. And you copy that and you hit enter and it says you're about to add this node and you say, yes, I really want to add this node. Okay, it will be adding in the background now. So I'm going to pause the recording. So node three has been added now. So when we didn't have to watch the paint dry because I paused the recording. So let's look at this uh, status again. And it is 
and then pipe more. And there you have it. We have the three nodes added and everything looks good. Okay, so I have brought up a web browser and I'm going to HTTPS 192.168.1.217 and port number is 8080. Remember that you always have to add that 8080 or else it say it's not found. Okay, we log in here. Okay, I told you I was going to show you one more way to add nodes to the cluster, and that's here under Cluster Management, down to Hardware Configuration. Click on that. Okay, you see there are the three that we've already added. Well, we don't really have any more, but if I click here, Add a Node, it's going to look for nodes that are connecting to the switch but not configured not added and notice there are no nodes we knew that but all you would have to do is to click on the node that you want to add and then click the add node button so the last thing i want to do in this session is to apply a license to the cluster because most of the features don't work unless you've got a license so we don't really have a real cluster here. So there is a way we can do it. We go to licensing. Okay, so here we have the licensing screen. It says all of these features and they're licensed for zero nodes. So we scroll down to the very bottom of this page and down here it says manage trials. Click manage trials and I'm just going to go ahead and license everything and say start trial and then close and go back up here and oops, refresh now we look at the license page and it says license for three nodes on everything and that's all there is for this presentation so remember you want to continue watching please uh, subscribe to my channel and click the like button thank you